Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Trent Arterberry, and this is a series on how to be a mime. Now we're here today at the beautiful Westmont School in Machosan, BC, and I'm going to be assisted by some students from the school. Why don't you say hello to them now? Now the way this video is going to work, I'm going to show you how to do a move. Then I'm going to show you the students trying it. Then you might want to pause the video for a second and try it yourself until you feel comfortable and ready to move on to the next move. Thank you for joining us today in the How to Be a Mime workshop. I'm going to teach you guys some illusions. These are going to be some cool tricks that you'll be able to use in storytelling to impress your friends or your family. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. OK. Let's just do a really quick warm up. Everyone reach up over your head. Up, 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 reach up, 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 reach out, reach out, reach out, bend your knees, reach out, reach out, bend your knees, reach out. That's it. Fingertips on the ground. And stretch your back legs up a little bit. Oh. Okay, bring your bring your bottoms back down. Bring your bottoms back down. Slowly come up, come up, come up, come up. Good. Some shoulder circles, guys, shoulder circles like this. Good. Now, head circles. And back the other way. Okay, good. Shake out your hands. Shake out your face. Shake out your leg. Shake out your other leg. This is what, this is what they mean when they say shake a leg. And shake your whole body. <laughs> okay. Now the basis of mime technique is called isolation. Isolation is where we separate one part of the body from the rest. For example, I could isolate my head by moving it forward and backward like a chicken. Go ahead and give that a try. Nice. Nice. A little more difficult is isolating the head from side to side. Now begin by putting your fingertips up over your head like this. Pretend that your elbows are whispering secrets to you. Listen to one elbow, listen to the other elbow, and listen, and listen, and back and forth. That's good. Now bring your arms down like this. Keep your head moving side to side. Now I'll let you in on a little secret. The way to make this move look really good is to pull the shoulders up a little bit. If your shoulders are down, your range of movement isn't so much. But if you pull them up, you can slide your head a lot farther. Why don't you go ahead and give this a try? Fingertips up over the heads. Pretend that your elbows are whispering secrets to you. And listen to one elbow. Listen to the other elbow. And listen, and listen, and back and forth. That's it. Good, Tristan. That's good, Nate. That's good, Mackenzie. Pretty good, Elsa. Good, Annalise. Good, Briny. Bring your arms down. Now, keep your head going side to side. Now, here's the trick. Bring your shoulders up. Everyone pull your shoulders up, and that'll loosen up those muscles in the neck. You can slide. You're not quite, so, not quite so high, Elsa. That's better. That's it, Elliot. Nice. Nice. Get Nate again. Nate's got, Nate's got an unfair advantage. <laughs> He's seen me do this a million times. Now, if you put these moves together, the front, the back, and the side, and the side, you can bring your head around in a circle like this. This is a really useful move if you want to impress your friends or scare your enemies. Hey guys, give this a try. This is, this is kind of advanced. But if you can do the head side to side and front and back. Annalise, that's beautiful. Look at that. Get Annalise over here. I do this a lot. So. You do this a lot? Yeah. Whatever cool. for? I don't know. I just do it. <laughs> it just feels like this. Feel like nice. Nice. Okay, good. Now, a really useful move in mime is called the Tour Eiffel. It's called the Tour Eiffel because it was created by a man named Etienne de Creux, the father of modern mime in Paris, France. Begin by standing up straight and tall like a toy soldier. Push off with one foot and let your body rock side to side. 
The idea is to keep your body nice and straight in alignment at all times. Good, Michael. Michael, see if you can pull your shoulders down a little bit. That's it, boy. That's good. Nice, guys. Really nice. Now look. Do it the same way, but keep your feet flat on the ground. Just bend one knee, and up, and the other knee, and up, and the other knee, and up. Tristan, you're sticking your hips out. Your body wants to travel out. Okay, okay. Go into that position. Yeah. Now don't move. Don't move. Your body needs to be in line, straight line down through here. Okay, do you feel it? Yeah. See what I'm doing? That's it, that's it, back up. Here, let me help you. Don't move. See what I mean? Now you're in a straight line through that leg, right? Now come back up, bend to the other side. That's it, good, back up, bend to the other side. Now you might have a tendency to bend at the waist. That would look like this. To make sure you're not doing that, take your thumbs, put them on your ribs, take your fingertips, put them on your hips, and make sure there's no bend there. Thumbs on your ribs, fingertips on your hips. As you do this, that should help you feel that your hips are staying in line with the ribs. Nice, Brenny. Bend your knee, Annalise. Bend the knee. That's it. Good. You also might have a tendency to bend at the neck, like this. To make sure that's not happening, put your thumbs on your collarbone, put your fingertips on your jaw, and make sure you're staying straight. We're also going to learn this to the front. Start with one leg forward, other leg back. Now you're going to keep your body straight through the back leg. Just bend the front leg. That's it, good, Elliot, nice. And forward, and up, and forward, and up, good. And forward, and up, and forward, and up, good. Now this movement is very important. It's used for leaning, it's used for pushing and pulling, it's used for the tug of war and many other things. So be sure you get this down before you go on to the next lesson.